All right, we're recording. Welcome back to The Dilemma. I'm Emma. And I'm Brian. Burns. And today we're going to be talking about goals, the different categories which you should set them, some of our personal goals, and yeah. Maybe a little inspiration. Yeah. So I'd like to start it off with sharing a little bit about a young person's goal that uh, a story um, about Emma that she's going to get probably a, a little embarrassed. And I'd like to share my screen if she'll let me. Um, when Emma was five, she came to me and said, Dad, I really want to play soccer. I'm ready. Basically, I'm going to play soccer. So I signed her up. And as the season progressed, um, Emma, you know, was actually taking it really seriously. <laughs> so here she, that here's a picture. Or older. You weren't, yeah, you were, this is a little older than five, but you're a cute little girl playing soccer. I just wanted to share that quick picture. Those, those shorts were embarrassing to wear. Yeah, I think your tongue is sticking out too, because you're really into it. Anyway, um, Emma was, uh, taking it really seriously. And I don't know if you've ever seen five-year-olds play soccer. Most of them don't take it all that seriously, but uh, you know, that's not always the case, but Emma did and she was uh, <clears throat> doing well and learning to play the game and passing the ball and kicking the ball and shooting and all that stuff. And I remember um, there was two games left and um, she came to me and said, dad, you know, I really, I haven't scored a goal all season and I really, really want to score a goal. So I gave her some advice, you know, because I played soccer as a, as a young man, I played in high school and a little bit in college. And um, so she, you know, went out there and did the things that I told her to do. And that game came and went and she still didn't score. Uh, second to last game, a little more advice, a little more coaching. She went out there and, man, she would, you know, push herself and play hard and, get, you know, get knocked down and bounce back up and doing all the things. Parents started cheering for her, but <clears throat> still no goal. So last game of the season, um, you know, I talked to her a little bit beforehand and tell her, you know, a little bit more advice uh, from me, from her coach. Um she had, you know, help from her teammates and her, and her coach put her in a position where she could score and uh, she's playing with passion. She was super determined. Um, she, like I mentioned, she'd get knocked down and bounce up. She had bruised knees and scrapes and she did not care. Um, several shots on goal that just went wide or hit the post and just kind of get it to go. And uh, she really he really wanted that one of that uh, goal. And uh, so, you know, we get down to like two minutes left in the game. At this point, both sides of, of the field um, were cheering for her. I mean, everybody knew that day that Emma was going to try, you know, was trying to score a goal and everyone wanted to see her succeed. So we had both uh, teams, parents uh, cheering for her. It was intense um you know so at one point with just two minutes left the ball goes out of bounds and this little boy named luke uh you know throws the ball in right to emma and so she traps it she turns she dribbles around a defender and she shoots and she scores and the crowd went wild all the parents were excited for emma that she finally scored the school um Nobody really cared, even from, you know, the parents of the other team, that it wasn't their team. Uh, they were just, everyone was happy to see um, her score. And so, of course, I ignore the no dads on the field rule, and I run out onto the field to celebrate with her and uh, give her a high five. And she just kind of looked stoic. She didn't look all that excited, like I expected her to, as I was, you know about scoring that goal um you know 
I was super um, excited. I couldn't contain it, but it didn't seem like a big deal to her. So I was like, maybe, maybe I misread this whole thing. Maybe she wasn't as uh, thrilled about that as I thought. So I, um, I started to walk off the field. And just as I reached the sideline, I felt this touch on the back of my leg. And uh, I turned around and there's Emma and she has uh, tears streaming down her face. And she looks up at me and says, dad, I did it. I scored a goal. And of course I picked her up and we embraced and the world kind of disappeared for that moment in I'm time. I'm right now. Like this is <laughs> embarrassing. And I'm like, wow, that's so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> so I sent her back on the field because uh, there was still, you know, these, you know, minute or two left on the, in the game. And I heard, uh, I heard a little kid on the team say, um, you know, why is she crying? And another, a little boy says, have you, have you heard of tears of joy? And uh, it was, it was, it was kind of a funny thing that kind of broke the ice at the moment. And it was, um, it was a favorite moment in life for me. And it really, really brought home kind of the idea of, of goals and, and setting those goals. You know, you had determined you were gonna play soccer. And once you started playing soccer, you were determined that you were gonna score a goal. And that literally was your goal, is to score a goal for that season. And what was really uh, fascinating about it is, um, well, first of all, it didn't. you didn't do it on your own, right? You had your coach who, who gave you coaching throughout the season and taught you the game of soccer, which you had no idea of prior to that. Um, you had teammates that were helping you. Um, you had parents were, you know, cheering you on, which is always helpful to have somebody that's encouraging you. Uh, you had, you know, me giving you advice from, you know, someone who had played before and, um, and all these things, right? You had the equipment, you had all this stuff to help you achieve your goal. And, and, and so there's a lot more that goes into it than just knowing that that's what you want to do, right? You had you know, band-aids to, to, to heal the wounds and, and all that stuff. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit about, about that. But um, the other thing that was, was interesting about this was, A, the amount of passion that you had for the game and for the decision that you made to score a goal. Like, it wasn't just the kid out there playing. You know, there, there were certainly kids out there that had – not that much interest in the game, but you were determined and you had a passion for it. And then secondly, what was really cool is that the next season, now that you've figured this out, you overcame that hurdle in life and you knew how to make it happen. I remember you scored seven goals the next season. So, it, you know, you exponentially multiplied your ability to achieve that same goal um, because you got past that hump you achieved it you got over it and so then doing that became much much easier and and um muscle memory and all of that right so it, it wasn't as daunting to you because you had done it once before so i wanted to start with that story first of all just because i love the story but also because it's a reminder to us all like if, if we do the right if we if we do things with passion and we put our heart into it and our uh, put the work into it um, and with the right support and help, um, we can really achieve what we set our mind to. I think it's also kind of a cool story because it goes back to what we had said a few podcasts ago about your support system and how um, it's awesome to reach those goals. But if you don't have the right people around you, then you don't get to celebrate it the same way you would if they were the ones cheering you on all along. So um, yeah, to have those cheerleaders in life, it's so important. It makes those good times just that much better, but also helps you get through the hard times, like all the other games that I didn't score. So yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Um, and by the way, I'm wearing my Pele shirt in, in, in memory of Emma's uh, soccer. If you don't know who Pele is, I saw he's... her career now that it's over. <clears throat> He's a famous uh, soccer star, the greatest of all time from Brazil. Anyway, so when we're talking about goals, I think there's really uh, five 
five or six categories that you want to set goals in. Um, the ones that I like to to um, set for my excuse me for myself are um, education goals. So always looking to improve. Maybe you don't have any, you know, at a certain stage in life, there's things, you know, maybe there's no specific education goals or, or maybe you don't have something in every category, right? But these are the ones, the main ones that I like to look at. First is education. It might not be like going back to college. It might just be as simple as taking a class or learning a skill, um, maybe taking, uh, you know, finding a mentor to learn something improving your yourself and your knowledge right um the other is career goals it's like what are you what are you trying to achieve is it um specifically something you want to achieve in the job you're in maybe you want to move up the ladder into a new job um maybe you want to start a whole new career and you need to you know figure out how to the steps required to do that the third would be financial goals um what are you aspiring to do maybe it's achieving a certain pay um, income level. Maybe it's setting aside certain amount of money for, for your future, for retirement, for college, for your kids, whatever those uh, different financial goals might be. Uh, maybe it's investing in stocks or real estate or, or something like that. Um, the other is, I, I kind of lump these two together, but you could separate them out. It's fitness and recreation. So, Fitness would be, you know, maybe getting back to the gym or getting to the gym. Moving. Yeah, um, get your body moving. Exactly. Recreation might be uh, take. What's that? A hobby. It might be a hobby. It might be going uh, traveling. It might be, you know, doing hikes or picking up uh, piano or doing, um, uh, you know, mountain bike riding or whatever that might be. Something recreational. Um, and then the last one, and that's why those two kind of go together because recreational can be fitness as well. But, uh, the last one would be spiritual. So for me, you know, I, I believe in, you know, volunteer work and doing things with your church or whatever that, you know, it might take a different form for you. Maybe it's philanthropy. Um, uh, maybe it's, you know, meditating, maybe it's taking a, um, a Bible class or, or whatever that might be that, that helps you in your spiritual life. What for me, that's my, you know, Christian faith for you, it could be something else. Um, but I think it's an important element in our life and something that we, we may want to consider, uh, setting goals around again, you know, you may pick and choose, you know, which of these are important to you at different stages in life. But I think those are the five or six, uh, depending on if you're combining a few of them that I you think, really want to consider. I think to put it into three main cat categories, it should be physical, mental, educational, because I think one you didn't touch on that's extremely important is the mental element of it all. And that can include therapy, um, that can include a hobby, but it's really focusing on like your mental health. I think you could pretty much uh, put that under spiritual, spiritual, mental, emotional goals, you know, maybe, maybe that, you know, uh, getting therapy is going to help you become more grounded. It might be simply, you know, joining a, a group um, of, of other people that are, you know, have similar interests as you. So um, anyway, those are the categories that I think are important. Um, did you want to touch on any of these in particular, or how do you want to go about this from here? Yeah, well, let's talk about now that we've broken it down into ways we set our goals and in the different categories we set our goals, let's talk about some of ours in each of those categories that we have now that we're approaching the new year, what some of our new goals are for the new year. Okay. Well, I would say for me, um, I have some, I, I guess that you call them recreational goals, bucket list items, um, as well as career and educational. You know, I started a new role this year uh, at a new company. So 
my goal this year is to um, is really meet and exceed my my um, quota as a salesperson. My ultimate goal being to make you know president's club and uh, achieve the highest um, honors, if you will, in this role. And whether that happens this year or next year, or the following year, that's my, you know, that's what I'm trying to achieve and, um, and just become really good at the job that I'm in right now, learning the products, understanding them. And so <clears throat> that's, that's an area that I'm focused on as far as career goals. Uh, yeah, I think for me, this, these past few months have been an educational period, not to say that I haven't put my best forward because I certainly have, and I've tried to absorb as much information as I can about the role and how to be the best at it. However, it has just been like a few months of peer learning. So yeah. next year, I just want to excel, take all that knowledge. I'm currently doing that, but um, basically I want to do what you said. I want to meet my quota. I want to exceed my quota. Um, that's my goal is just to be the best I can at the job I'm in. And of course I have future career goals, but that's my goal for next year. It's to be nice. the best. What I'm doing. I, um, an educational goal of mine, um, and I wouldn't say it's an immediate goal because I don't think that it, you know, I, I can fit it into my current uh, um, lifestyle uh, um, at the moment, but I would, I would find it fulfilling to get my doctorate. I have a, you know, I have my undergrad, I got my master's degree in business. And I think it'd be pretty neat to get a doctorate. So I'm kind of exploring the ideas, like what would that be? You know, what, what subject that would that be? You, actually, I didn't know you were interested in that. I knew that once you retired, you want you considered being like a professor, but um, I didn't know you were currently looking to get your. Doctorate. Again, that might be like a five-year goal, yeah. um, maybe even a ten-year goal. <laughs> Um, but it is something that I'd like to, that, that would be my edu my next big educational step. Um, my current, ed you know, educational stretch is just learning, learning about this, uh, current job that I'm in and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, the other thing that I have, I I'd love to do it from a recreational perspective is there's some <laughs> places I'd love to. No, no, no. It's oh, not sorry. My education. Hit me. Um, I'm graduating from college this December. So I feel like a lot of this year, well, the past three and a half years, my educational like responsibilities slash time has been spent on the requirements for my different courses. So whether it was readings um, or lesson plans, whatever it was, that was where my attention was spent. So now that I'm going to be graduating next year, I want to focus some of that energy on just reading more about the industry I'm currently in and investing more time in just like understanding perspectives from other angles that are outside of like a company or an organization. So whether that's like reading books others have written or listening to podcasts um, or just talking to other people, not to say I can't do that now, but like I said, just a lot of my energy and time has gone into school. So that's going to be my new educational direction along with, I would really like to start attending Toastmasters which is a global group that helps you learn how to speak in front of others and focuses on your dialogue, using filler words. And I think that would be a great class to start getting into, again, just to perfect my position and further my education. Speak, 
speaking skills and all that stuff. Yeah, it's really great. It's great from that perspective. Um, it's also a good networking uh, group. You know, you meet people in all kinds of different walks of life. Uh, so it's really, it is really great. <clears throat> I wouldn't mind doing that as well. Um, from a recreational perspective, if we can switch gears here, um, I have some goals. I'd love to go, you know, travel. I'd love to go see, I'd love to go to Israel. That's kind of a recreational slash spiritual, honestly. Goal, though, right? What, what's that? Is that a next year goal or a five-year goal? Well, yeah. I mean, these don't have to be next year, um, right? So these, yeah. and, you know, that is something I think um, I might do with Nate for his senior graduation, something like that, uh, to take a trip. So I wouldn't, so Israel is on my list, uh, Scotland, because Burns is Scottish and be nice to kind of see the homeland, so to speak. Um, and while I'm there, see, um, Ireland, I'd love to see the Egyptian pyramids, um, you know, they have I'd a really like cool... to see the Northern Lights. I think that'd be really awesome to see the Northern Lights. They have a cool cruise that touches on like Israel, Scotland, Ireland. We kind of looked at that for my 21st, but that would be kind of cool. It would be, yeah. I so... volunteer myself to be a part of that trip, by the way. All right. I think Peyton and Nate want to do the same. So we'll have to, we will have to uh, make some plans for that. And if I reach my career aspirations, then I'll be able to afford it, right? Yep, that's right. So these things can kind of tie together. I'll have something to celebrate. Right. What about you for uh, recreation? Um, I think right now I'm just focusing on getting my body moving every day and this kind of goes into recreation slash like Fitness. hobbies, but okay. I would really like to start playing the piano. Um, so taking some piano lessons, I would also like to get back into ceramics. I took some classes, not took some classes, but took a class in high school and I really enjoyed it just to sort of escaping just the work mindset it allows you to just it's very cathartic yeah so I would love to do some of those types of things um when I get back home that's where piano is but yeah right now I'm just focusing on getting my body moving every day and it's a great start to my day nice my uh fitness goals I as you know uh, I haven't really told too many people so I'm I guess I'm sharing the news on our podcast here on the daily dilemma that I'm taking uh, Taekwondo. I've been doing this now for a while and for over a year and I've earned my way up, worked my way up to a brown belt. And my ultimate goal is to get to a black belt. And um, honestly, it's been a really great um, physical activity that I do two times a week. And it keeps me, it keeps my body moving it helps a lot with um, not just the physical, but mental. Um, I'm, you know, I work up a sweat every time I go. So it, it definitely gets me going. Um, and from a physical perspective, I'm trying to, trying to get to the gym. I, I have a, a, a mini triathlon coming up in December that I'm doing with your brother. And so I'm uh, trying to get some cardio in to, to achieve that as well. So I've done this one a few times and uh, I'm planning to do it again. What's cool about Taekwondo is you're actually working towards a goal, which is your black. So yeah, I do like that. I mean, you do sport in that <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun. And you're learning a skill and something new and a lot of like balance and thinking because there's the different poem says that you have to learn and rem and memorize them all the motions and balance and so it's really good it really it's really a unique uh, sport in that sense that you're um developing all those things i think it's good for guys like me that are getting a little older and need to work on their memory and you know keeping sharp and balance and all that stuff it, pretty cool i think it's similar to like yoga or 
you know, some of those other sports where you, um, where it kind of gets you grounded. And I think the term is like centered, you know? Um, so anyway, I'm enjoying it. Love it. So I think we've touched on, well, the next one would be, or the last one that we haven't talked about is financial. I, I think that, you know, that. But in spiritual, we didn't touch on that one either. Okay. So one of my spiritual goals, I, your brother and I were, were attending a men's Bible study at your, actually at your uncle Scott's house. And we were doing that on a weekly basis and that kind of fizzled out it, you know, people got busy and so it sort of kept getting canceled. So they sort of discontinued it. So my goal now is to, is to find another study that I can join and, and be semi-regular at um, getting in you know, getting together with other men and um, talking about biblical things and how, how it can impact your life in a positive way. How about you? <laughs> um, my spiritual goals. This is a good one. One that has me in deep thought. Um, I think my spiritual goals is just to start going to church more regularly and find a good group of friends who also enjoy going to church. Um, I think that can sometimes not, you have to have the self-motivation, but I think it also helps when you have people with similar mindsets as you. Um, yeah that are near you all my friends are like in different states so uh, yeah i i think that's definitely been a more recent goal is just to find people that um, yeah kind of it's good to have different perspectives but also some that think the same way you do in certain senses so yeah yeah, yeah absolutely cool um what about financial goals <clears throat> Um, for financial goals, I think next year I would like to have my student debt paid off. And I would also like to save for a down payment on a house. Okay. I'm at a stage where I'm saving for retirement. retirement. I'm saving for weddings for my daughters uh, to be able to help pay for those. Um, and, you know, I, I think investments and those kind of things would be, well, helpful in achieving my long-term retirement goals and stuff like that. So it's kind of where I'm at. Well, I enjoy talking about my goals with you. And so go ahead. Go ahead. Well, no, I was going to say those are goals, but a, a couple things I wanted to kind of talk about goals in general is that in order to um, achieve them, I think it's critical that you, first of all, you write them down, have them somewhere written so that you remind yourself of what they are. And it's really, um, it's really hard to achieve something that you don't, that you don't have written down. So write, write them down, share them with somebody like we just did with each other. Um, and then prioritize them, figure out, okay, if this is a five-year goal, then what are the things that you need to do between now and the five years in order to, you know, like with me and the, and the doctorate, maybe I need to do some research on what, what are the different options, you know, what fields of study are there for a doctorate that I would be interested in and good at, um, what schools offer them, and and then, you know, financially, what's that look like and some of those kinds of things and then set some middle goals like when am I going to have an idea of which college I'm going to go to, you know, is, is that I in think, two years? I think the way to sum this up would be SMART goals. So specific, measurable, attainable, relevant and time bound. Time, time yeah, time bound, some sort of time frame for them. Yeah. So write down all those things for each of the goals and have an idea of when you want to achieve them and what are some of the stepping stones that you need to take along the way. 
and you then have it for different years. So like these might be our one year slash five year goals. But you could have these for different stages of life. So for me, yeah. I'm looking at next year. For you, you might be looking at the next five. But it's good to still have those lists because that's where the attainability comes into place, as well as the time time aspect. One hundred percent. Yeah. And then the the last thing I would say about it is, don't be afraid to change them. You know, like write them down. But as life goes on, sometimes your goals change, sometimes your interests change. And so eval evaluate those every year or every six months or every month, whatever that yeah, works what for I you. Was at the beginning of the year, as I put together like almost like a dream board, but it was just yeah. what I wanted to do in that next year. And I put it on a poster and I put it in my room. And that just reminds me of what my goals were and all those Though a lot of, not a lot of them, but a few of them changed, like my location. I didn't think I'd be living in Florida for the, the most part, because I knew what they were, it was yeah. easy to go about my year and complete a lot of those. And so I'm going to go back home and, and see that board again. And um, I, you know, I took a picture before I moved because they couldn't take a whole poster, but I... Yeah. I completed a lot of them. So it's a really good way of just a reminder every day, whether it's a page on a notebook or a full on poster or on your computer. Um, right. Pictures, po you know, paste it to your monitor or <laughs> up on your desk or whatever that just reminds you of those things that you're trying to achieve. And it gives you motivation, right. For the, for your day and what you're, what you're planning, uh, what, why you do what you do every day. And it's helpful. Yep. That's right. And then tweak them. Like, if you decide this is a goal that you really lost interest in, then drop it and change it. Find something else. All right. So let's wrap it up. I'm going to ask okay. a question. Now, I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of stores have completely passed by Thanksgiving and jumped into Christmas. So yes. I want to know what your favorite holiday tradition is that we have. Mm. I think for me, one of my favorites is Christmas morning. We uh, we get up and open gifts as a family and we have the extended family come over. Um, sometimes boyfriends and girlfriends or whatever uh, arrive and we have a you know pretty nice little gathering at, at the house with a uh, big breakfast, all the cinnamon rolls and bacon and eggs and all that stuff. And, um, and we all just, you know, sit around and, you know, we read the, we actually read the Christmas story together and, um, and then we open up gifts and share, share that joy with one another. And I really, I really dig that. I think it's a good time. Mine is, that's one of my favorites too. Like I love <laughs> this for, you know, I don't know, we have new, little traditions and, it's something to look forward to. But one of my favorite is after Christmas Eve service, normally we'll go out for Chinese food and we will then open up one present, which is pajamas for Christmas morning. And there's just something so exciting about that. Like again, going to the same Chinese food restaurant every New Year's Eve, you know, Christmas Eve. Yeah. sorry, Christmas Eve. Yeah. Um, we know all the workers. We've been going there for years. <laughs> There's something just so memorable about. It. We know the name Peonies. <laughs> yeah. Um. Yeah. I don't know. It's it's very fun and it's about family. It's about being together. And it's about Jesus. So yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. Yeah. So we both had similar, similar ones. I like that. Cool. Well, thanks for letting me share your your soccer goal story, literally goal uh, setting story. Um, it's an inspiration for me whenever I think of it. And uh, maybe it'll be an inspiration for other people as well. That's right. And we appreciate you tuning in this week. And we will see you next week for another dilemma. Bye, guys. Bye.